Okay, so I'm going to call to order the meeting of the Cumberland County Public Library Board of Trustees meeting on Thursday, February 18, 2021. And we are meeting via GoToMeeting. Um, and so I'll just call the meeting to order. So I would like to introduce our special guests, uh, Friends of the Library, Hope Mills Branch, Representative Gail Riddle. So Gail, could you just say a few words for us, please? Sure, I had to unmute myself. Um, <laughs> good morning, everyone. And I'm really not very special. I'm just uh, the usual usual goings on. But I do want to report, uh, we, like everyone, uh, have not been, you know, obviously outwardly very active. But at the same time, we have been having all of our meetings. Um, and as of February 12th, we had 161 members, um, and which I think under the circumstances is pretty good. And March 2nd will be our next meeting and orientation for any new members of the group. Um, I do want to report that on Giving Tuesday, which I'm sure you're all aware of that the Cumberland Community Foundation um, sponsored the Giving Tuesday this year, it's, it's global. And this is the first year that, that CCF has participated and therefore the first year that their nonprofits have participated. We uh, at the library got um, $1,655 donated through that Giving Tuesday catalog. Um, and with the matching grants, um, which are not direct one-to-one -one matching, but percentage-wise for the amount of money that was available for matching, we ended up with $2,309.45 going to the friends through that uh, project, which I think was a, a good turnout for the first time. Uh, hopefully we will do, uh, if it's in fact picked up and done every year, we will then begin doing even more, um, getting out the information to to our people at the library to let them know that that it will be matched grants and uh, matched money for grants and and therefore hopefully we will get even more people to participate. We did have to um, change our our annual meeting from January because obviously we couldn't meet at the library or anywhere else with the numbers of people that with 161 members uh, therefore but in the bylaws there is uh, a method for us to move that meeting and we will do that as soon as it is safe to do so we did have our election of officers however because that is done by mail um, and those officers of course uh, took office starting in january so we're moving on we're doing what we can the the book sales of course are on hold but we're talking about how we're going to be doing that in the future even if we have to start when we still have our masks or whatever our new normal will be uh, therefore uh, we will continue i hope to bring in funding so we can continue as soon as we are able to fund great programs for the library. And I thank you for allowing me to come today and for allowing me to have this time to speak to you. Thank you so much, Gail. We appreciate that information and we look forward to hearing about the continued good things that the friends are doing for us. Um, so to, uh, I'd like to move on and uh, move to approve today's agenda. May I have a second, please? I'll second, this is Dennis. Thank you, Dennis. Um, any discussion? Uh, can we do a roll? I'm go because we are uh, virtual, I'm going to be doing a roll call vote. Anne? Aye. Thank you. Katrina? Aye. Irene? Aye. Um, Jeremy, if you're able? Aye. Anne? Oh, aye. Thank you. And Dennis? Aye. Okay. So thank you. So now um, I'd like to move to approve the January 21st, 2021 minute, meeting minutes. May I have a second for that? Second. This is Jeremy. Jeremy, thank you. 
And again, any discussion on the meeting minutes, any corrections, any additions? Is there anything um, someone feels needs corrected? No. No, okay, thank you. So again, I will do a roll call vote. Anne? Aye. Katrina? Aye. Irene? I missed the meeting, so I'm not sure I should be voting. I don't oh. know. Okay, well, you can add stain, I guess. Okay. Jeremy? Aye. Pam? Aye. And Dennis? Aye. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Uh, we will now move on to the director's report. Good morning, everyone. Um, before I get started, what I would like to do is we have a brand new personnel manager and we invited her to come to the meeting today. Rayanne, um, will you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Hello, I have been in the Fayetteville area for about eight years, seven and a half, eight years. Uh, I've been married with my husband. He's stationed here in the army and um, we've We've traveled, we're from New England. I'm from the Boston area. He's from Maine and we moved down here. Um, and surprisingly, this has been our first and only duty station. So, um, you know, it's it's been good getting to know the area and the state of North Carolina. So um, we don't have children, uh, but we just bought a home. So we'll be getting that ready and set up and, first time homeowner, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, I mean, every everything has been going well so far and I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Um, I guess it's my turn to do the report. So we, we do have us a, um, a report for this month and I wanted to talk a little bit about numbers. So we have uh, um, upper, outreach by the numbers. Uh, we have delivered Crifton's. Um, we have flyers um, that still let people know that we are here and that we are available. We've been delivering those as well. We've also been putting those in the curbside um, bags when customers come to pick up their items. And we have delivered magazines and books to Operation In As Much. Um, we received a call, I believe it was yesterday, for um, additional magazines from the, um, they want them for the detention center. So we're going to pull those items and get those ready for them as well. Just to give you all a virtual learning center update, um, we still have approximately daily average 33. Um, so far, the spring semester, the format will be the same as it was for the fall. We are um, looking to see if the format will change in March. Um, if it does change, it will be where half of the students, approximately half, will come on Monday and Tuesday. Everyone will be here on Wednesday, and then half will come on Thursday and Friday. But we are following the direction and the path set by Cumberland County Schools. Um, they are still being very helpful. They are providing staffing still, and they are continuing to provide um, lunches and snacks for the children that do um, participate. And the Cumberland County Extension Department is providing programming. Um, last um, fall, they were providing programming in person, but once the numbers did increase for, for COVID, they went to virtual programming. And the first round of that programming happened last Thursday, I do believe, and I heard positive results about it. So I'm very happy about that. Um, Jessica Drake from the Extension Office um, is often says that she's very excited to come out or meet with us, program with us virtually, and she enjoys it as well. So that's a plus for us. I'm hoping that that partnership will continue um, even after um, COVID goes away. Service by the numbers. So for the last part of February, I know last month I gave you all the numbers 
for um, December to uh, mid January. So what I'm going to do for curbside this month is give you the numbers for the end from the time from after the board of trustee meeting to the end of January which is 1,539. So I think that's pretty good for approximately nine days of curbside. So that's, I think that's excellent. Our lib chat, um, that is our virtual reference service from January 2016, from January the 16th, 2021. Sorry about that. I took us back five years um, to February the 14th. Uh, we had 90 um, people to call in and ask questions, and we were very happy to assist them. Virtual programming by the numbers. Um, the numbers that you see there, the number of reaches, basically the number of people that um, actually viewed and saw what it was that we were offering. So our craft programs um, from January 22nd to February 12th, um, there were 648. Preschool um, programming was 1,207. Um, school age was 1,061. And our teen, teen stream was 807. Um, I've been talking to a few people and I hear nothing but good things about the um, videos that are up. So again, this is another service that I anticipate us keeping um, even after COVID goes away. Um, I wanted to share with you um, that the county has recently launched a local government cable channel. Um, and I wanted to share this with you because while yes, um, it is important because you'll get to see a lot of the things that are happening um, with local government, but is um, the library's virtual programs will also be um, streamed on here as well. Um, Sally is on the line this morning, so if she, if you want to, Sally, you can jump in and speak a little bit about the local government channel launch, if you like. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, we're very excited to have CCNC TV launching. Um, it is on uh, Spectrum Channel 5, but you can also watch it from our website. It, it, in fact, your meeting right now is streaming on the website and on the channel. Um, and your library uh, staff has done a great job in creating the virtual programming that's been out there on their social media, and now we get to share it with a broader audience. Thank you, Sally. Um, we recently changed the um, book, the story that is at, on the story walk. So for this quarter, um, the story is How Do You Walk a Waka, which is basically um, about a little girl um, learning about jazz music. So um, tell those you know to please go out to Clark Park, um, walk around the story walk and see what the story is all about. So I just wanted to share that with you as well. Um, we are looking at um, identifying a story um, that will go along with the summer reading program um, theme, which is Tales and Tales. So we're looking to see what kind of animal stories we can find um, that would be able to go up on the story walk. Um, since this 2020, so last year, we the library did um, work with um, the Census Bureau and they were um, they sent us um, certificates of thank you, and I wanted to share that with you all. Um, a lot of the training took place here at the headquarters branch, and they wanted to tell us thank you. They were very appreciative of that, so I wanted to share that with you as well. And the last thing is team spirit. So we had a little football game a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if you all know that or not. Um, and uh, here was a very big football game. So what we did to um, encourage team spirit, um, we invited our um, all of our staff to dress up um, for their favorite, who, whoever their favorite team was. So it did not necessarily have to be just football. So there were, um, there's football, there may have been um, hockey, 
there was um, college teams as well. So, but they really got into the spirit and did do a dress up. And I think this is one of their favorite times of year. We are often asked, can we dress up for team spirit? Yes, definitely, because we always like to have fun doing that. And that is my report for this morning. Any questions? Um, I have just, just one question, Katina. I remember um, last um, month we mentioned about um, synchronous programming. Mm -hmm. um, that something, is that going to, is that something that might go through the television channel or is that, um, that a different way? It's not going to go through the television channel. What we are doing, um, we've been working with county trying to get um, WebEx. So then that way, um, when we are um, hopefully next fiscal year, we'll be able to start that. Um, I'm fanatical about starting new things midstream. So we'll probably start that at the top of next fiscal year and take the summer to play with it a little bit. Um, but we're looking at having WebEx and that will go through um, our Facebook page as well okay thank you for that um, mm -hmm. before, before we move on to um excuse to, me uh, i i have a question belinda oh, go ahead pam i'm sorry <laughs> that's okay um katina when you were giving the numbers at the beginning you um said a acronym that's not familiar to me was it crafting it was in the oh, first Okay, that was community resources for those in need. And that is a brochure that um, our library customers, um, Public Health, um, Salvation Army um, will give out to their customers to let them know where they can go to find information on um, clothing, um, food, um, medicine, um, shelter, that type of thing. And it is um, basically um, a collection of some of them are nonprofits, um, churches, um, other community organizations that people can go to to get the resources that they need. Okay, thank you. I'm familiar with it. I just didn't recognize the um, abbreviation. Thank you. Not a problem. Anytime. And Belinda, if I might, I don't want to derail the program or the agenda for this morning, but Katina, I'd just like to um, throw out a question for consideration about opening curbside on Saturdays. Okay. Um, I've, I've had a lot of people say they really miss being able to get books, but they can't get to the library between nine and four Monday through Friday. So um, just something to throw out. Thank you for throwing that out. We have been um, thinking a little bit about it. And what we will do is um, Nora, Pamela, and I will put together a something to um, pitch to Sally and county management to see about doing at least one Saturday a month at one or two locations. But we will put that out there to Sally um, once we put together a plan. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions for Katina? Before we move on to um, the next um, order of business, I just wanted to say, Rayhan, uh, welcome to North Carolina. I'm a fellow New Englander. I'm Yay. So <laughs> it's nice to see someone else from, from my home region here. So yes. welcome. Thank you. Okay, so now we'll move on to um, review and approval of the 2022 budget. Ah, oh, it's me again. Okay, yes. so you all received your budget books. Um, yes. What questions do you all have before we... Okay, I had a question. Mm -hmm. When, um, I don't know if this would be under supply, under the janitorial, but I was just curious with um, the virtual learning, has the, um, the need for additional funding for PPEs or cleaning supplies, has that been factored into the budget or is the amount that is there, is that sufficient? That, that, that amount that is there is sufficient. Okay. Um, it was um, factored in um, to an extent in different lines. So yes, that, that amount there is sufficient. 
Additional and, I, and I have just, yeah, I just had one question on the fuel line, just trying to understand, um, are, are we still using the, the vehicles uh, as much, or did we use them as much in, in 2020 as in the prior year? Um, okay. Is there more to the question? Yeah, there, there would be. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking in terms of we're increasing based on fuel cost projections, but was there any savings offset in, in 2020 in fuel that, that would, you know, then maybe make the, the increase unwarranted? And it, it's just a general question on usage of, of vehicles and the fuel costs. Okay. Um, so in 2020, we did not... Um, use our vehicles as much because um, we did not do the mobile outreach. Um, however, we still did our courier service. Um, we still used our van to um, go to different areas, to different branches to make repairs as needed. Um, so in that regard, um, the only savings there would have been for the mobile outreach. Um, the increase um, that is there is to anticipate for the rising fuel costs because we've been noticing that fuel costs have been um, steadily increasing um, over the past few months or so. Okay, all right, thank you, appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Are there other questions? Thank you. Um, I do want to make a statement. Um, there was um, an increase on the um, computer software line. Um, Dr. B, you were asking about um, synchronous programming. That $10,600 is for the software that we would need to do that. Thank you. Any additional questions for me? Other questions? Okay. Um, thank, like you. Make, and thank you, Katina, very much. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the um, fiscal year 2022 budget. Uh, may I have second. a second? This is Pam. I second. Thank you, Pam. Uh, we've had our discussion. Um, I, mean, I will do a roll call vote again. Um, Ann? Approved. Thank you. Katrina? Aye. Thank you. Irene? Aye. Um, Jeremy, are you still with us? Okay, we're going to do an extension for um, Jeremy because he had to go away for a couple minutes. Uh, Pam? Aye. And Dennis? Aye. And I also vote aye. So the motion has passed. Uh, let's move on to new business. Um, so we'll have a report from Pamela Kurs. I hope I pronounced your name right, Pamela. Uh, it's course, like a golf course. Okay. <laughs> um, it's all right. That's actually not as bad. Um, and when you throw in the fact that I grew up in an area that was mainly Eastern Europeans, it's surprising that people have trouble pronouncing such as a name they, they outthink themselves. Anyways, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Pamela Course. Um, Unique Management Service is the company that we use to collect our outstanding fines and fees and materials. Um, this company has 24 plus years of library only collection experience in the US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and the UK. We pay a flat rate for accounts that are cleared, not a percentage. And we add a collection fee of $10 to any account that we report to them. Um, and it's not waived by the staff unless we determine that we made the mistake. Um, so whenever we're negotiating with customers for, you know, we're going to give you a 50% reduction in the amount of money you owe us, the $10 is not part of that 50% reduction. It's the 50% plus the $10. How does the process work? 
um, they use what they call a gentle nudge approach. Um, they tend to hire a lot of people that are going to seminary. These are people that aren't going to get down and dirty and nasty. They're, they're calmly and professionally persistent. Um, you get a letter, initial phone call, second letter, second phone call, you know, five letters and a final phone call. Um, the, the goal is to maintain the patron goodwill towards the library. That is their highest priority. We are currently on a hold status with this company. There have been no new accounts sent to them since we closed last March. Um, the, yeah, there's been no news. There has been some movement because some people's cards were blocked, so they paid their fines remotely. Um, but those have been few and far between. The following few slides are a brief explanation of three other reports that we receive from the company monthly. The first is the account status report. Um, the highlights, this is what the report looks like when we get it. Um, it shows the activity from the, our start date to the last date of the previous month. So this report contains what we have, how they have helped us through the end of January of this year. 75% um, of the accounts we've sent have had some sort of response. Returned materials, payments, or amounts um, waived. Um, the total activated, which is um, the, the top yellow line in the middle, that is how much money we've, uh, how much money we have reported to the, them that they have gotten a response from. Um, the dollars received uh, in the right column at the top. That's how much money has been paid to us, um, or that we've reported is recovered, and one million one hundred and thirty one plus thousand dollars worth of materials have been returned. That's the big number. That was money that would have just gone down the tubes. Um, the cash money is nice, but getting the materials back is, is more important. This is the collection statement. Um, it outlines the transactions made within the previous month. Um, this is the bottom line from last March's report because most of the other monthly reports were absolutely nothing. So in those few weeks we were open in March, we collected um, almost $33,000 in cash. We waived $700 plus, um, got back over $2,000 worth of materials. So, you know, $6,400 $6, worth of um, funds were uh, returned. And I don't know what that commission due agency that I looked at all the previous reports and it was zero on all of them that apparently we don't want that included on that report. We do get billed separately. And the progress report. So in the previous it's uh, submissions and transactions um, of patrons sent to the agency within the previous six months. This again is the summary for the six month period ending last March, because basically there was the most recent one would have had nothing. Um, you know, so you can see that we reported 132,000 and managed, even with being closed for two weeks, we recovered $41,000 either in materials or in, in uh, cash that we got. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, this um, report, this is just the bottom line. The report is actually pages that has a listing with every account with the name of the person in that. And it tells how long it's the account's been open, how much the original was listed, how much we've collected, the current balance, and the last date a payment was made, and the status. Is it fully paid? Has it been waived? Has it been closed? Um, it's a multi-page um, thing that has a lot of detail in it. Um, the benefits of using this, this service, um, it helps improve circulation because if things aren't on the shelves, they're sitting in someone's home, those tend to be the newer items, more popular items. It slows down circulation, getting them back, makes numbers go up. 
It helps reduce the expense for collection replacement. If I don't have to buy three more copies of the new bestseller because people didn't return it, that's three other books that I could purchase um, that would help with other things. Um, when the service is used as they recommend, they guarantee there will be no out-of-pocket cost. Basically, the customers are charged and what they they, that bill that we give them, that pays for the service. So it's a zero sum for us. And the return on investment averages 4 to $7 in returned materials and cash for each $1 invested amongst their customers in North America. Um, we also have access to, um, they send us, when we're active with them, when they reach out, if they get a change of address or a new phone number or something, they send that information back to us monthly um, in an uh, upload-ready Excel document so we can keep our accounts, our customer information current. Um, and we can also suspend accounts. So say a customer says, look, I can't pay this $300 um, all at once. Can I work out a plan? Each manager can work out a plan and suspend the account. And then we monitor that. And as long as they're paying, they don't get contacted again. They stop paying after a month or two or they stop paying and then we can reactivate the account and then the letters start coming, you know, the, the process continues um, if the plan is not followed. Any questions for me? No? It's been very helpful. It's amazing. Um, they get that letter and a lot of stuff comes back. Thank you very much. It was interesting to find out about that. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So now we'll move on to the next report from um, Heather Hall. Good morning, everybody. I hope you're all doing well. Thank you for having me at today's yeah. meeting. I do want to start out by talking about some of our new resources that are available to customers who have a library card. Um, keep in mind that some of these resources, in order for customers to access them, they need their library card number and a PIN number, which is the first four letters of their last name in all caps. But we are very excited uh, because now we have access to the Fayetteville Observer Collection. So customers can access uh, the paper, today's paper, all the way back to 1988. Now keep in mind that from 2018 until now, customers can view the newspaper in a full color image-based PDF version. So you can flip through it, look at thumbnails, it's very nicely presented. If the issues are older than that, it's generally just a text HTML view. So right here on this slide, um, if you go to our databases page, you can go to F and see the Fayetteville Observer Collection. That's the image on the very top. Directly below that, um, when you click there, it gives you options for viewing the Fayetteville Observer Collection. So as you can see highlighted, 2018 to present shows an image base. And then from there, you can search what date you want to view the paper. And the right image shows a cover of the February 11th, 2021 cover. It looks nice and beautiful, easy to navigate through, responds very quickly. Along with the Fayetteville Observer Collection, we do have access to NewsBank and Access World News. This gives broad coverage of national, state, and local media sources. Customers can easily browse by topic area, resource, search by keyword, names, or events. It's very user-friendly, so if there's something you're looking for in one way or another, you can generally find some information. As far as some of our e-resource updates, for NC Digital Library, RB Digital Materials folded into NC Digital. Um, our PIO department has been very helpful in helping publicize that and making sure our customers are aware for how to access those items and still resume e-checkouts for those books and magazines. Now, NC Live has also added some new resources. 
we used to use Mango Languages for our language learning platform, but that has changed to Transparent Languages, which when we go over in further detail in just a moment, um, you'll see is a little bit, some could argue better. Learning Express Library replaced the Testing and Education Reference Center, and we used to have this database, so it's not completely brand new for staff. That makes training a little bit easier, and it's very intuitive, very user-friendly, and our customers will get a lot of use from those resources. Transparent Languages. This resource is amazing. You can learn over 110 languages, including English for non-English speaking customers. And they have a resource called Kids Speak Online. It is a language learning program designed specifically for young learners. They have curricula available for children to learn Chinese, English, French, German, Italian, and Spanish. So it's a wonderful resource for um, children or parents who wish their children uh, to learn additional languages. Learning Express Library. This is what replaced our earlier system and staff has been given training materials and video tutorials for these resources so we can be better prepared to assist our customers both through virtual reference and when we open back up to the public. There are all kinds of um, different tests and ways that you can learn basic computer skills, career prep, study for the GRE, ASVAB. It's a wonderful resource, very user friendly. And the Innovation and E-Resources team is tasked with coming up with weekly Tech Tuesday posts for our social media. If you view our Facebook page, you'll see hashtag Tech Tuesdays. Uh, they usually post around 5 p.m. on Thursdays. We have shared topics from recipes, programs where you can select the ingredients you have at home and it will give you recipes containing all of the ingredients you already have if you don't know what to make. Um, the best recipes for different dietary issues, uh, first aid, weather, adoption help, budgeting, creating ambient sounds, obtaining low-cost prescription drugs, gardening, a wealth of resources, and we are seeing that our customers are both engaging and sharing these items for their other followers. And lastly, I wanna go over some of our database statistics. For our digital resources downloads for eBooks, audiobooks, e-magazines, and audiovisual, You'll see July 2020 to January 2021, this fiscal year on the left, compared to the exact same time frame the last fiscal year. There's a substantial increase in every item except for the all other category, which contains some of our databases like Ancestry, Author Alerts, Brain Views, NC Live, VetNow, and more. And we really attribute that decrease just to um, fewer staff customer interactions. Typically, when customers enter the building, staff guides them to use our databases for their informational and research needs. So without them coming in the building, there is less usage of those um, resources. But the IET committee, we continue to explore new service options and evaluate the usefulness of current and potential products. We're looking to be aware of customer needs, new products, and learning opportunities for staff and for our customers. And with that, if you have any questions, myself and my co-chair, Mary Campbell, who is also on this call, would be happy to answer any that you have. I have a quick question. Yes. Have you, is there any possibility of the um, Hoopla resource that you get to stream movies and stuff through the library is that something that is um on being considered at all or looked at um heard about it through i still get the emails from our former library system and um it sounds really neat um and i was just wondering if that was being looked at at all 
Yes, I know um, through NC Live there is some access to Hoopla resources. Um, I believe the process for it is a little um, complicated. And I know Pamela is looking into various streaming services to add additional materials. But Mary, do you have any additional information on access to Hoopla currently for our present customers? You're muted, Mary. Thanks. I'm muted, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yes, um, we, we are trying, to, we are considering adding streaming video services. Hoopla is complicated in that um, it, well, when you open up the service to a lot of things, it, it's like you pay per circ. So it is a, a different kind of service model that we're considering um, adding, but we're not sure. And I think Pamela probably knows more, but it is something we're exploring. Yeah, you, you have to pay every time so much that you pay, so you may get a really big bill one month, or you have to cut everybody off at noon every day because you've run out of circs that you've budgeted for. Um, okay. We're looking at a model where it's it's still the checkouts, but it's for unlimited use of an entire library. So, for example, all of Acorn Media, you can watch every episode of Midsummer Murders for the it, it, within that week, and you know it's it's only one circ and it, it costs much you know overall much less. But videos um, that we have available in streaming just don't get a lot of use. Um, as opposed to some of the other stuff, and I think it's a broadband thing. But we do continue to monitor, and every couple of years we do a research and see what's out there, see what our customers are looking for. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there other questions? Thank you very much. That was really informative. I, I loved hearing about all the new resources that people can access just with their library card, so we just have to keep pushing that message out there to folks. Um, do we have any other business? Okay, with no other business on the agenda, I will call this meeting, I will adjourn this meeting um, as of, what is it, 9.47 a.m. So thank you everyone, and um, we'll meet again next month. Yeah, thanks everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.